Hi, welcome to Energising Flow. So all you're going to need today is potentially a couple of cushions, but if you haven't got them, then you can absolutely do um, this practice without any props. Um, so yeah, if this is your first class in my new space, then welcome to my new home and my new um, space at home. Um, hopefully everything will be just as clear and the lighting will be just as good um, in this new spot. Um, I'm still working on all of those kind of details. So we're going to come to start today in child's pose. So whenever you're ready, finding a way into your version of child's pose that suits you. So maybe the knees are together, maybe apart, and then bringing the forehead down when you're ready. And then allowing the eyes to close, maybe taking a big inhale through the nose, filling the body, particularly the sides and the back of the body. And then exhale, sigh through the mouth to release. <sighs> maybe taking one more of those on your exhale, really grounding the body down into the mat, allowing it to release, allowing the shoulders to release. Maybe taking some softening through the jaw. And then beginning to draw your attention inward. What does your breath feel like today? Is it coming easily, gently, slowly? Does it feel short, fast, shallow? Maybe checking in with what you're bringing to the mat today. What's your day been like? What's your week been like? Anything that you don't want, anything that's heavy or stuck, allowing it to release from the body and come out through the mat as you exhale. Maybe visualising space being created with every exhale for something new to come into the body. So as you exhale, release the old things, the stuck things. As you inhale, there's a little bit more space for new energy, for new things to come into the body and fill all of those spaces. So always taking this bit at the beginning of class as a kind of a mental and physical clearing out of the body, clearing out the old and making space for the new. So using your breaths to do that as you inhale, as you exhale. You can stay with nose and mouth for breathing. You can move to ujjayi breathing. Whatever's feeling good for you today, staying with those inhales and exhales. Working to clear the body, inviting new energy into the body. Taking a couple more breaths here, maybe finding a bit more space in the back of the body and the sides of the body. Maybe your inhales can come a little deeper. And then on your next inhale, pressing through the hands, rising up onto all fours. And starting off with a few cat cows, so warming up the spine, warming up the body, pressing away with the hands, engaging through the abdominals. And then as you inhale, lifting the hips, opening through the chest, the gaze lifts. Exhaling into your cat, rounding the spine, abdominals draw up to towards the spine, tucking the chin. 
Coming through one more time at your own pace. So really feeling into this with your breath. And then finding your way back to centre. Stepping your left foot and then your right foot back into plank. And then lowering down, so you can either lower down with the knees down if you want to for this first one, or the knees lifted. Either way, you're bending the elbows towards the back of the room, untucking the toes, and finding your way all the way down to the ground. When you get there, pressing through the hands, lifting the chest, and maybe hovering the fingers a little bit. So taking a really baby cobra here. And then hands down by the ground. You can either press through back up onto your knees or press back up into the full plank position. So kind of like a little press up. Tucking the toes underneath and then lifting the hips into downward facing dog. When you get there, taking a little pedal with the feet and just beginning to open up the back of the legs. Checking in that the head and the neck are nice and soft and heavy. Sometimes they um, can hold a little bit of tension. Sometimes good old Mr. Neck likes to come in and work a little hard. So encouraging your neck to relax, to let go a little bit, the jaw to relax. And then finding a way into stillness. You can take a bend in the knees if you want. You can have the legs straight. And then we'll take a few roll forwards and backwards into plank. So inhale, rolling forward, head comes forward last. Exhaling, pressing through the hands, lifting the hips back to downward facing dog. So coming through at your own pace like you did with your cat cows. So warming up the body. And if you want to here, you can add on a couple of mini vinyasas, a couple of chaturangas. So whatever it is that your body needs today, um, if you're feeling like you want that kind of extra dynamic um, and active element to the beginning of practice, then by all means, lower down through chaturanga or come through cobra back into your downward dog. Coming through a couple more times. When you find your way back into your next downward facing dog, okay, taking a couple of breaths here, really grounding down through the hands, through the feet, lifting the hips high. And then making your way to the top of the mat. So stepping, walking, floating, whatever feels good today. And hands come to shins, opening up halfway lift. Exhaling into your forward fold. And then inhale, rolling up through the spine, all the way up to stand. Arms can come out to the side, reaching up overhead if that feels good. And then hands to prayer. I'm going to just bring my mat back a tiny little bit so I don't crash into the ceiling. These are the things that you learn when you're in the new space. That's better. Okay, once you get to the top of your mat, taking your feet to hips width apart, grounding down through the right foot. So we're going to do quite a lot of work um, sort of balance wise today. So we're concentrating on those three points, the base of the big toe, the base of the little toe, the heel, those are your three points of support, getting a little feel for them on the right foot, maybe a little move from side to side. And then finding somewhere that you can focus on, I suggest somewhere not moving and fairly close. As you inhale, weight into the right foot, left foot lifts up, coming into your half mountain. And if you want to inhale, arms up overhead. As you exhale, we're stepping back into high plank, arms shoot backwards, and trying to see if you can keep your balance coming back. Inhale, reaching the arms up in your high lunge. 
And then maybe sinking the hips down a little bit. You can take a couple of little bounces here. Arms reach back again. As you inhale, arms reach up, back up into your high mountain. And then shooting back, high lunge again. Option if you want to, to lift the front heel, so coming into a little balance in your high lunge. And then inhale, lifting the arms up. Taking another breath here in your balance. Lowering the heel down, arms come back. And then inhaling, back up into, whoops, <laughs> maybe you have a little wall like I did, into your high lunge. As you exhale this time, arms come down, tipping back into warrior three. So kicking away with the heel of the left foot, and the gaze comes down. Taking a breath here. Arms can either be down by the side or you can reach forward if you prefer. And then back into high lunge, keeping your balance if you can. Inhale, arms reaching up. Maybe you also lift that front heel. And then heel comes down. Hands by the feet. And then we're going to come back into one-legged dog. So keeping the foot lifted and it rises up into your one-legged dog. We're lifting from the inner thigh. Keeping the weight evenly through both hands. And then shifting forward into a one-legged plank. Option to come through Chaturanga with one leg lifted. Or you can bring the foot down and then come through from here. So either Chaturanga or Cobra. Whatever's feeling good today. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. Taking a couple of breaths in your down dog. On your next inhale, step walk or float, coming to the top of your mat when you're ready. Finding your way to halfway lift, hands come to shins, gaze straight down. Exhaling, releasing to forward fold. You can take a bend in the knees here if you want. And then inhale, rolling up through the spine. Maybe the arms come out to the side, reaching up overhead. And hands to prayer. We'll come on to the other side. So this time grounding down through the left foot. So finding those three points of support, the base of the big toe base of the little toe and the heel. When you're ready, taking that little, those little sways into the left foot, finding your, your place, feeling into those three spots. And maybe getting a sense of the internal zipping up through the body. So connecting into Muller Banda here, linking in with, um, with your pelvic floor. And then inhale, arms reach up. And maybe the right foot lifts into your half mountain. As you exhale, arms shoot back into high lunge. Staying balanced here. Inhale, arms reach up. And then maybe you take a couple of little sinks down into the hips, a couple of little bounces. As you exhale, arms draw back and inhale, grounding down through that bum foot, finding a place to focus on, arms reach up, high mountain. As you exhale, foot steps back again, into your high lunge. Maybe you choose to lift the front heel this time. Arms rise up, coming into your balance in your high lunge on both toes. Lowering down the front heel. Arms reach back. And then inhale, grounding down through the foot, lifting up into your half mountain. 
This time, tipping forward, warrior three. So very carefully, seeing if you can keep your balance, kicking up through that back heel, seeing if you can keep the hips square, gaze comes down to the ground, reaching back with the fingertips or out in front if you prefer. And then back into high lunge, lifting high with the hands, maybe you also lift the front heel. Front heel comes down, hands by the feet, stepping back into your one-legged dog, left leg reaches high, lifting from the inner thigh. Rolling forward, one-legged plank. Option to come through Chaturanga with the foot lifted or bringing it down and lowering through as you feel good today. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. On your next inhale, lifting the right foot back and up, coming into one-legged dog on this side. And then stepping it forward in between the hands, grounding down the back foot and rising up warrior two, keeping a bend in that front knee. From palm reverses as you inhale, coming into your reverse warrior. And then exhale, taking your side angle. So either the elbow comes to the thigh or hand comes down to the ground. And reaching up and overhead with the left arm. Option if you want here to take either a half bind, left hand comes behind the back, tucking into the hip crease. Or maybe if the full bind is available, you lower the right shoulder and bring the hand underneath, creating the full bind. Keeping the chest open if you've taken that bind today. As you inhale, Hand comes back down to the ground, rising up, warrior two. And then hands by the feet, spinning onto the right toes and stepping back into your one-legged dog. Rolling forward into your one-legged plank. And an option to come down, either with the leg lifted or as normal through chaturanga of your choice. Inhaling, upward dog or cobra. And exhaling, downward facing dog. On your next inhale, left foot rises up, one legged dog. And then stepping forward in between the hands, rounding down the back foot, warrior two. Inhale, front palm reverses, coming into your reverse warrior as you inhale. Exhale, finding your extended side angle, either elbow to thigh or hand to the ground, reaching up and overhead with your right hand, palm facing down. Option to take the half bind, hand comes behind the body. Or the full bind if you're feeling open today, lowering the left shoulder down and then linking the hands behind the back. So only taking the full bind if the chest can stay nice and open here. Taking one more breath. And then releasing the bind, left hand down, rising up warrior two. And then windling the hands, Spinning onto the back toes, stepping back, one-legged dog, left leg rises up. Rolling forward into your one-legged plank. And then lowering the foot down if you're getting tired here, feel free to bring the knees down if you wish, that's okay. Inhaling upward dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. On your next inhale, step or core float, coming to me at the top of your mat when you're ready and halfway lift. 
Exhaling forward fold. Inhale, rolling up through the spine, coming up to stand when you're ready. And hands come to prayer. From here, we're coming back into a bit of balancing, taking the feet to hips width apart and finding those three spots on the feet. Grounding down through the right foot first of all. As you inhale, lifting the left foot up, coming into half mountain, arms rise up. Reaching tall on your inhale. On your exhale, shooting the leg back, arms come back, high lunge. Inhaling, arms reach up. Option to take that little balance on the tiptoes, lifting the front heel. Lowering the heel down, grounding down the back foot, opening up into warrior two. Bending through the front knee, reaching out front to the back of the mat, hips face the side of the mat. Straightening the front leg, hips move backwards, reach forward with the right arm and then tipping at the waist, coming into your triangle. So bring the hand down to the shin here if that's what helps to Keep the chest open, you can bring the hand down to the ankle if there's space for the chest to still be open. Inhale, rising back up, warrior two, taking a bend through that front knee. Flipping the front palm, reversing, coming into your reverse warrior. And then returning to warrior two, hands by the feet, Stepping back into your one-legged dog, spinning onto the toes of that back foot, right foot rises up. And then coming through, rolling through your um, plank with one leg. Option to keep that leg lifted or lowered. And coming through your version of Chaturanga. Inhaling upward dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. Taking a couple of breaths here. On your next inhale, rising forward, coming to meet at the top of your mat, maybe walk, step or float into halfway lift. Exhaling, releasing to forward fold. And inhale, rolling all the way up to stand. Arms come out to the side, up overhead, and palms to centre. So coming through on the other side, grounding down through that left foot this time, finding those three points of support. Once you've got your spot to focus on, inhale, lifting the right foot, arms come up overhead into your half mountain. Exhale, shooting back, high lunge, and then raising the arms up. Option to take that little balance on the tiptoes, lifting the front heel if you wish. Exhale, bringing the heel down, opening up warrior two, grounding down that back foot, rearranging your feet if you need to. Taking a little moment here in your warrior two, reaching out through the fingers and then straightening the front leg, moving the hips back, reaching the hands forward, tipping at the waist into your triangle pose, really finding openness through the chest here. Gaze can come up to the fingers or it can be out in front, whatever feels best. As you inhale, rising back up, warrior two, taking the bend through the front knee. And then reverse warrior, flipping the front palm, reaching up and reaching back. As you exhale, returning to warrior two, hands by the feet, spinning onto the back toes, and one legged dog, lifting the left foot high.
rolling forward into your one-legged plank. Option to come through one leg, chaturanga again, or bring the foot down, take any variation that you want. So I'm taking a, a knees down, adapted version, doing kind of almost like a knees press up here. You can inhale upward dog or cobra. And then coming into downward facing dog when you're ready. Inhale, filling the body. And exhale, deep sigh out through the mouth. <sighs> Couple of breaths here, reaching the hips high and back, pressing through the hands. On your next inhale, stepping, walking, floating, coming to me at the top of your mat, in halfway lift. Finding length through the spine, really opening through the chest. Exhaling forward fold. As you inhale, slowly taking a roll up through the spine. And then inhale, arms up and overhead. And hands to prayer. From here, lowering down into your Malasana squat. So bringing the toes out towards the edges of the mat, the heels slightly in. And then bringing the hands to prayer and lowering all the way down. So if it's comfortable to have the heels down, bringing the heels down, moving the chest forward, elbows come inside of the knees. If the heels are up, of course you can lift the heels up and still have the hands lifted. Or you can bring the hands down onto the ground if you want to take a little move side to side to open up the hips that way. So wherever feels good, taking another breath in your Malasana squat. And then lowering down. So you can either bring the hands behind the body or you can kind of come to take a little sit without the hands up to you. Now from here, we're going to come into Balakanasana. So bringing the soles of the feet together, opening the knees. And this is where if you've got cushions, if you'd like to, you can pop a cushion underneath each, um, each knee. So have a little bit more of a supported version. You know how I like a cushion in this pose. And then seeing if you can really find some length through the spine and broadening through the chest. Option if you want to, to take a forward fold. So that's why I say, see if, you, see if you can find that length first. And then as you exhale, if you want to, you can begin to tip forward from the chest. So only coming down as far as feels good here. You may want to just stay sitting fairly upright. You may want to come down onto elbows. You may want to fold down all the way head to the floor. Seeing if you can get a sense of leading with the chest. And then once you're there, if you want the head to then round and, and go a little bit heavier, then by all means, feel free to, um, to let the head relax. So wherever feels good here, taking a few breaths in whatever pose, whatever variation of this pose that you've chosen. And then on your next inhale, if you've taken that forward fold, walking the hands back in, hands underneath each knee, and gently bringing the knees together, hands behind the body, little shake of the legs. We'll continue doing a little bit of openness onto the, um, the inner thighs and the legs. So opening the feet nice and wide to wherever's comfortable. You can bring a cushion underneath the hips if you want, if you notice that you've got a bit of rounding through the spine. And then sitting up tall once you get there, whether you're on the cushion or whether you're on the ground. And the same option here, you can either stay in this position here, you can have hands supporting you behind. You can bring the hands onto the legs or in front. And if you want to, you can, can begin to walk the hands forward, either onto elbows, you can take a bind with the toes if you'd like. Um, you can bring the forehead down. So, you know, whatever you're feeling today, um, whatever variation of this pose is right for you. So seeing again, if you can lead with the chest, you're getting a sense of keeping the spine long. And maybe closing the eyes so that you can really feel into what's going on in your body. 
finding that edge where you just begin to feel a bit of a stretch. So nothing that's too intense. It's really easy to overstretch in this pose and suddenly end up waking up the next day feeling like you've overdone it. So being really mindful of what your body needs, having a little listen in and seeing how far down it wants you to come. And of course, if you've got your cushions handy, you can um, use those to create a halfway point if you want to come down onto elbows a little higher up. As before, once you find the place where you are comfortable, where you've led with your chest, then you can let the head be heavy and relax a little bit if that feels good. Take in a couple more breaths wherever you are. And then on your next inhale, really slowly walking the hands back in. Hand underneath each knee, bringing the feet to centre. And then maybe you take a little windscreen wiper with the legs this time. From here we're going to come into um, a sort of one leg hero pose. So if you've got any problems with your knees, then what you might prefer to do is to come into a kneeling position and just get the openness through the front of the body by um, coming into saddle. So bringing the hands behind the body and then lifting the hips and doing it that way. If your knees are feeling okay, then what we're going to do is bring both legs out in front. Right knee comes in. Left hand comes out to the side, so you can lean over to the left side. So this is to help protect the knee. And then you can bend that right knee, bring in the foot behind the body, and then come to sit back on both sit bones. So that's just a nice little trick for getting into sort of one leg hero pose so you don't put any strain on the knee. The knee is a hinge joint, it's only meant to move in this direction, nothing kind of uh, crazy side to side. So we want to look after the knee. Keeping the knees sort of hips width apart, so they don't need to be together here. And then you'll start to get a little bit of openness across the front of that leg. Um, if you're feeling quite open today, then of course you can use your cushions behind the body and begin to sort of lean back a little bit onto maybe elbows. And then you've got that support with your cushions there. Um, and come back as far as feels good. Again, being really mindful not to overstretch here, a bit like in the last pose we were doing. So you can come back as far or as little as feels good. It might be that you're quite tight in your legs. And just seeing about how it feels to breathe into the front of that right leg. Where do you experience tightness? What does it feel like? If you are coming all the way down to the floor here, so if it's in your uh, in your practice, if you're quite open to come all the way down, then I would just say be really mindful of looking after yourself when you're coming back up. So, um, you know, when we do come back up, I'll show you how, you how you can do that. Take in one more breath here, breathing into the front of that leg, into the front of the hip. And then if you've come all the way down to the ground, you're going to use your elbows and your forearms, tucking the chin, using your abdominals, to help you come up and then onto forearms. So you're not getting too much rocking, you're keeping everything nice and straight. And then you can come all the way back up to sitting. To untuck that leg, same as we did going in, leaning over to the left, and then you untuck the leg and roll back over onto that hip, little shake of the legs, and we'll come over onto the other side. So again, option to take saddle if your knees um, have a bit of, you know, a bit of, um, tenderness or if you've got an injury there or whatever it might be. Otherwise leaning over and bringing the right, um, the right, the left foot in, bending the knee, leaning over to the right side, lifting up the left hip and then you can tuck that foot behind, roll back onto the sit bones. So be mindful, it might feel completely different on this side, you might have one leg that you know you sit there suddenly the knee doesn't feel good, maybe you're very very tight across um, the quad, across the front of the leg. So saddle's always an option, feel free to come out at any time. And then of course you've got your, your pillows that you can bring behind if you would like to come back a little bit. So keeping the knees hips width and then really carefully having a little feel in if you do want to come back. 
it might be that you don't want to on this side, but being mindful of coming back, having a little feeling, keeping both hips grounded down. If you notice that left hip lifting, come out a little bit, come forward a little bit. And if you are coming back, be mindful that this is a back bend as well. So being careful with your spine, looking after your back. So lowering down here as far as feels good. If you are taking it all the way down to the ground, keeping the hips level coming down. So gaze stays straight ahead, tucking the chin slightly. And then once you get there, then obviously you can kind of open up and relax a little bit more. Taking a couple more breaths here. Exploring what sensations are going on in the body, what it feels like in the front of that leg. And don't worry here if you're not coming down um, very far or if you're not coming down at all. Um, you know, we've all got very different bodies. So just working with, um, with what's feeling good for you, that's, that's the best possible thing that you can do in yoga is to listen into what your body needs on that specific day. If you have taken a lean back in any way, really mindfully coming up. So if you're all the way back, you're tucking the chin, you're pressing into um, forearms to elbows, you're engaging the abdominals, and then you're coming up without too much rocking, you're keeping the chin nice and straight. Leaning over onto the right hand, lifting the left hip to bring that leg out straight to the front. And then hands come behind the body, little shake out. From here, taking a little sit in staff pose. So again, you might want to have a little cushion underneath the hips if you tend to get that rounding in the lower spine. So you'll see how that brings the hip forwards. Inhale, reaching up. We'll just take a couple of waves here. So exhale, waving forward. And then rolling up, arms reach up. Exhale, waving forward. And then rolling up. So just kind of releasing everything in the back of the body with these little waves. It doesn't matter if the hands don't come and touch the feet. You can wave literally just down to shins if you want. That's fine. And then arms reaching up. Bringing the hands down, removing anything that you've got underneath your hips. We'll take a little reverse plank. So hands come um, behind the body underneath the shoulders and fingertips facing backwards. Although if you prefer to take reverse plank with the fingertips facing down the mat, of course you can. And then pressing through the heels lifting the hips and grounding down through the feet so that you come into a reverse plank. If this feels too intense, you can bend the knees and you can do kind of a reverse tabletop instead. So gaze comes to the ceiling. So taking a couple of breaths, you can let the head come back if that feels good, keeping the hips high and then lowering down when you're ready. And we'll take one more of those inhale, roll through the spine. So you can pop that cushion underneath again if you want. Exhale, rolling forwards. And inhale, back up. Hands come to the side, scooting about halfway up your mat, lowering down onto your back. And we'll finish off with a nice little spinal twist before Shavasana. So straightening out the right leg, left knee draws into the chest. Holding onto the left knee with your right hand. As the left hand opens up to the side and your gaze comes over the left hand. And then as you exhale, drawing the left knee across the body, rolling up onto the right hip and coming into a little twist. So you can either stay in the twist here, keeping both shoulders grounded down, or if you want to add a little bit extra, you can bend that straight leg, so bending the right leg. And then you can maybe see if you can reach back and grab hold of that foot with the left hand. So whatever feels best, you can keep that, that leg straight if you want, seeing if you can still keep both shoulders grounded down.
Gaze still over that left shoulder. And then releasing the right foot if you have it. Letting the left arm come back out to the side, straightening out the right leg. And then rolling slowly onto your back, head comes to centre. Bringing both feet into the chest, grabbing hold of the knees, little circle with the knees. And then we'll come onto the other side. So this time straightening out the left leg, right knee comes in, holding onto the right knee with the left hand. Right arm comes out to the side, gaze over the right arm. And then as you exhale, guiding that left knee across the body, you can roll up onto the left hip, coming into your spinal twist. Option to stay here if you want. Or if you prefer, you can bend that bottom leg, so bending the left leg, and then grabbing hold of the foot with the right hand, keeping that right shoulder still down on the ground. So up to you if, if you want to take that kind of deeper twist. Absolutely okay if you prefer to keep that leg straight, keep the arm out. So whatever feels good for you, whatever your body needs. Taking one more breath here, using that top hand to really guide the knees over increasing the, the twist if, if you want that. And then releasing the foot if you've taken that little bind. And rolling slowly onto the back, gaze comes up to centre, both knees into the chest and taking circles with the knees, maybe the other way to what you took them last time. And then from here, finding a way into Shavasana. So maybe you choose to stay lying on your back. Maybe you open up the feet, the arms, the legs. Maybe you keep a bend in the knees. And of course, you can use your pillows to pop underneath your, um, your head, underneath your knees, you know, whatever, whatever you prefer. So getting yourself cosy here. As you inhale, coming back to that breath that we used at the very start, inhale, filling the body. Exhale to release through the mouth. <sighs> Grounding the body down, allowing it to melt down. Finding space through the hips through the shoulders, through the chest. And perhaps taking a little moment to feel grateful for your body, for what it's been able to do today, whether it wobbled where whatever variations it took it doesn't it doesn't matter being grateful for for being able to move and for being able to be in this class to be able to have the choice to take whatever options felt best for you maybe thanking yourself for any times that you took a variation that suited your body rather than the one that you kind of felt that you should be in or you wanted to be in. Taking a little moment at the end of class to celebrate yourself, to thank yourself for taking the time to do class today. Maybe your body is beginning to sort of feel heavier. Maybe you notice certain points of the body really sinking down into the ground. Maybe the hips, the shoulders, the heels or the ankles, the backs of the hands, the backs of the arms, the crown of the head, the back of the head.
allowing yourself to welcome rest into your body. Taking a few moments in stillness here. If you can, then please feel free to stay in this position for a few more minutes at least today, for as long as you're able to. Receiving this restful pose, one of the most important parts of yoga practice. Thank you for joining me today for this energizing, funky balancing flow. Namaste.